everyone is ready for another show in archive. I'm Wokey and I'm here with Zenrado. Hello. And this is Shonen Archive. What's Shonen Archive? I'm glad you asked. Shonen Archive is a series in which me and Zen decide to go through every single Shonen Jump anime in existence in English that is easily available to us. Starting with the main series being Gintama and the other series that we plan to get back to being Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, Kuroko's Basketball, uh, and JJK and Chainsaw Man whenever their actual episodes come whenever out. Whenever they happen. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, whenever they happen. And Chainsaw Man, uh, we're waiting for a movie, so that, that'll be a while. Oh, God. I forgot that it was going to be a movie. Oh, yeah. man. It's a movie. Man. Actually, his most Fucking... recent movie, Look Back, is going to be coming to Amazon pretty soon. I tried to see that. I years. actually want to see that. Yeah, I really like Look Back, uh, the manga. I really yeah. hope they make one for Goodbye Area. That's, like, my favorite thing ever. That'd be nice. So look forward to that when it comes out on Amazon <laughs> so I can see it and then we can talk about <laughs> it. I tried to see it in theaters, and unfortunately, it would have I would have had to have draw, driven to a pretty far away place to be able to see it. Oh, so. that's unfortunate. Yeah, yeah, very unfortunate. But anyway... Today, Gintama will be episodes 275 to 278, which features in the Deco Boko arc, and then a little tiny uh, episode as well. So, let's get started. Yeah, I got, I got caught off guard with the last episode that wasn't part of it. I was like, oh, <laughs> it's oh. just a completely <laughs> random thing. Yeah, I forgot to say, th- this is going to be the same for the next set of arcs, too, where it's like a three-episode arc, and then I had to include the little tiny one, just because otherwise it would be... Is it be... going yeah, into another arc afterwards? Yeah, it would be a little bit weird, unless we wanted to do like weird like cut-off of saying, like, okay, well, I'm going to decide to put them away from it. That's why it ends up being a little weird like that. But anyway, let's start with this one, which is episode... 275 9 plus 1 equals Yagyu Jubei, which I believe is a little play on words of the numbers of Japan, because I think Yagyu is 9 and Yu is 10. I don't know, actually. Let me see. Uh, Yu is probably <laughs> 1. No, it's 1 is Ichi. Never mind. Zen. Yeah, 1 is Ichi, right? <laughs> 1 is Ichi, yeah, that is correct. Yeah. So I don't know. Feel free to um, t- explain to me the joke, and I will, when I get back from Vegas, read it and see what it's all about. <laughs> Go ahead, um, Zen. Okay, so Kyubei is walking down the street. There's a fortune teller that's like, "Oh, I, do you, you don't you want to be a, a boy and not a girl?" And Kyubei's like, "I I guess I don't know." Um, and then a light goes off that hits the Kabuki district, and Kyubei's like, "Huh, wonder what that was all about." The fortune teller vanishes. Kyubei's walking down the street. And looks in a, like, window. And she's like, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to stare at you like that. But then it turns out to be her reflection, because she's no longer her, she's now he. Um, And I think she figures that out, because she grabs her new penis that she now has. Mm -hmm. Uh, And she's like, ah! And then someone else turns around and is like, bro, what are you freaking out about? And uh, she goes, I'm not not a bro. And she turns around and grabs... um, a, a girl's boobs and she freaks out it's like i'm so sorry and the person's like why are you apologizing for for grabbing a man's chest and then it pans up to show that it is the female um gintoki which is the uh ginkgo ginkgo yeah As although i think in... gintoki wants to call himself uh like so, something related to vaginas <laughs> and does not get allowed to do so yeah similar to the the toki part of being balls he wanted to name something vagina related yeah um <laughs> so they they figure out what's going that all that the genders got switched um and they're trying to like get used to it Gintoki does not have a problem with it because he gets to look at himself naked and he's like a very excited because he hasn't seen uh, a naked woman in a long time. His reaction of like, oh, this is sick. <laughs> yeah, he's like, this is rad. <laughs> this is so good. Uh, then they they hear Kagura and they go to, to go find Kagura because they figure Kagura has turned into a boy. And she has, sort of, but she's also like huge and old and has a, a wounded eye and she's uh she's jaho dune or however you pronounce it from, yeah, yeah, like a, a reference from the war of the three kingdoms <laughs> yeah also this is also the design of her character from way back in the monster hunter thing as well that's very funny mm-hmm. um 
and they're like, what the fuck? You didn't... This is a lot different than just changing your gender. What's going on? And then <laughs> while they're freaking it's out... It's not a he, that, it's a hero. <laughs> <laughs> And then I think Sadaharu is a is a horse now yes. instead of the dog. Um, and then Shinpachi arrives, and they're like, no, it got Shinpachi too, even though he doesn't look any different. And it's because his glasses frames are now pink. <laughs> that, that's that's then Shinpachi is just pink glasses. Um, it turns out that there is, like, everyone has, has switched. And so uh, the Kabuki district got, like, quarantined or whatever from the remainder of, of Edo. Um, all the residents are trying to leave, but it won't let them. And then it turns out that the fortune teller was part of this cult that worships the god Deco Boko. And uh, they're mad that gender roles are not being enforced in society anymore. <laughs> and so they... <laughs> the the god has like sent a trial to them where they must live as the swapped genders. Or... Uh, or they'll be permanently changed um, unless they come around to the teachings that gender roles are good for society. It's basically just like uh, a Prager U episode. Yeah, pretty the, much the, their this goal. is what their ultimate goal is here. Not knowing that the people they did it to are like, actually, this is pretty all right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> I would like my penis back, but, you know, I'm not too upset about this. It's just kind of annoying what you've done. Uh, and so... Gintoki and Kagura are like, well, we're going to make some cash off of this. Uh, oh, also, Kagura demands that everybody call her Kagura Dun, Kagura Dun or whatever. Yeah, Dun. And um, when, when Shinpachi's glasses get turned pink, she goes, damn you, Juge Leon. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the, one of the strategists from a different army from the War of the Three Kingdoms. That's funny. Um, Eventually, uh, there is, like, a riot, and a woman gets hit, but Jubei, who is boy Kyubei, saves the woman, but the woman is actually Tai, or Tai, oh, and Tai, uh, was not in the Kabuki district when the beam went off, she came back in later, uh, and so she did not get gender switch, so she is just her normal self, so Kyubei is now having this, like, crisis of, wait a minute, I'm a man now, I could be with her because we're not both women anymore. Uh, they end up all kind of meeting up, and Otai is progressively more irritated that everyone's hotter than her now, <laughs> that all the guys have, like, bigger boobs than her. Yep. Um, and uh, the Shinsengumi also arrive when they, they get outed as, like... Uh, the, the, what do they the, call them, like heretics or something? They're the, like they, 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 they get caught like there's like an alarm going off that says they're not acting in the correct gender role. Yeah, yeah, it's, it gets them in trouble with the with the cult, mm -hmm. and uh, the Shinsengumi arrives, and uh, Kondo is also like super hot, like the exact opposite of how awful he looked, and the only one that is not um, like a super hot girl is uh, Hichikata. Mm -hmm. who is, like, a, a chubby, overweight person. And the episode ends with, um... Oh, they also call themselves the Kunsengumi, which I do not know the, <laughs> the reference for. I, we both assume... We're both assuming why they're called the Kunsengumi. <laughs> yes, yes. I have my own bias mm. as to why it's being said. I don't know if that's a word in Japanese or not, though, so feel, I don't know. Feel free to tell us. And I'll, I'll read it when I get yeah, back from let, Vegas. Yeah, let us but, know. <laughs> but I have a feeling um, that the subtext is text <laughs> on this one. Um, but then uh, Hijikata is the only one who's not hot. And so the episode ends with, uh, with Otai going up to Hijikata and whispering thank you into his ear <laughs> because he's ugly. And fat, and as they say later, like a pig. Um, so yeah, that was this episode. How'd you feel about it? Apparently the name of Sadahara's new one is the Sekitopaharu, which is the horse. Uh, oh, yeah, the, 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 fucking, the fucking horse got me when, the, when he shows up and Sadahara is just clearly a fucking horse. It was so fucking funny. How, how'd you, how'd you like this episode? It was good. It was funny. Uh, the, I really like the Romance of the Three Kingdoms. I've read that, like, 
I guess it's not really a book, but it's sort of it's like a poem or whatever. Uh, several times, I, I really enjoy it. I've played, you know, the Dynasty Warriors games, the romance games. I just like that era of history. I think it's very neat. That, this is um, so funny because this is where it's like so the I reference actually, I, was killing me. I don't actually know that much about the Thirty Kingdoms outside of Lu Bu. Lu Bu is like my only one that I know. I think they they mention Lu Bu at some point, do they? Don't they? Uh, they mention. I don't remember. I didn't catch like every single reference. They mentioned Cao Cao like several times. Yeah, uh, but it's just funny that it's like, oh yeah, for me it's um, <laughs> it's Yoshi. Uh, not Yoshiwara. It's um. Anything to do with Nobunaga, I get. And then anything with the Three Kingdoms, you get. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is funny how it turned out that way. Yeah, I also uh, really like this episode. I thought it was funny. Um, the bit here of the the constant the 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 constant boob thing, like the thing of the the jiggle going up, and it's like it, it literally is the second that they have big boobs in the anime because usually they they exist, but they're not usually on display. But the second that they're on a man now, <laughs> and they put the camera like super close up, of saying like, "Why do you have to care about how a man's chest looks like?" <laughs> That's weird. It's really funny how they were able to just go all out. Like, even the um, when Otai's getting angry at them, the way she's, like, it looks like she's actively trying to rip them off <laughs> was really good. Yeah, like, trying to grip them off their chest. Yeah, and if you look back at the animation, it actually does look like she's straining them, like, to a high degree. Like, she's trying to legitimately rip them off. <laughs> that was funny. There's also a bit here with uh, the one who's playing Ginko, or Gintoki's uh, female version, where it is obviously not the same person whose voice is Gintoki, but she actually is putting on a Gintoki accent throughout the majority of it, where she talks in the same kind of slow draw that he usually has. And the only time she ever drops it is when they tell him to act like when he like when he has to act all girly and he puts on the cute voice, that's when he actually brings out the female voice. <laughs> so I thought that was a very nice touch. All the changes were also very funny, like Kagura turning into the... he's It goes beyond gender. He's not a he, he's a hero. I thought that was very funny. Um, Sadaharu turning into a horse. Kondo being a beautiful woman and still doing Kondo things. Like, when he shows, it goes like... Because at one point, Kintoki says, like, okay, but how do I pee? I actually don't know how you do it. And then, <laughs> then Kyuve's like, I don't know, just go normally. There's nothing feminine or um, masculine about pissing. He's like, obviously, you don't know how to do a masculine form of pissing. Because <laughs> there is. Um, and then Kondo in the beautiful blonde woman shows up. He's like, I'm going to show you. He's like, is it really okay for me to do this? Because he was like, okay with Tai showing him. But he's like, I don't know if it's okay for me to ask a beautiful woman to show me this. <laughs> and then she shows him where she took like a huge dump. Out in like the, in between, it goes like, oh, you because like that's clearly I don't need to go two, I need to go one, I need to, I don't need to go bigger, I need to go smaller is what she says, which is pretty good. I also like that Hijikata keeps his uh, his voice actor throughout it all. Sim, um, it's just like a slightly feminine version. Actually, no, it's not even a slightly feminine version. It's just straight up Hijikata's normal voice on <laughs> this version of his body, and the same thing goes for Yamazaki as well. Um, so yeah, good, good bits here. I like the start of this one. I also was finally happy to see where Ginko actually comes from, because like I said in the previous episode, this design of Gintoki as a woman is the reason why we started Shonen Archive, because back when we played Jabuti Heroes, um, or Jumpuchi, however you pronounce it, now that it's gone, um, uh... That that one that episode where we were talking about these designs and saying what the hell happens in Gintama is what eventually got us to do Shonen Archive. <laughs> yeah, we were we were talking about it because they were the like the limited rare units. It was him and it was Okita, which is funny because Okita doesn't like do all that much in no. comparison to everybody else. We we don't even see the the form that they take in Jumpuchi until like the third episode near the ending. It's like a it's an, yeah. like an end bit thing. Um. But yeah, all the other designs made me go like, oh, it's crazy. Like, it's so funny when I saw this female version, I was like, who is it under there? Because I remembered them from Jumpuchi. It was like, oh, that was Kondo the entire time? <laughs> That's crazy. That's hilarious. Yeah, the reveal that that was Kondo was very funny. <laughs> mm-hmm, it was. So it was cool to finally see it here. And they put a lot of, like, it's crazy how much effort they put into this. Like, even the ED changes so that the ones who we know have shown their new gender forms, 
those get new versions of their character in the ED. Like, it's now, um, it's still, uh, Yagu and, not Yagu, it's, uh, Kyubei or Jubei and next to Otai. And now instead of, like, hitting Kondo, she's, like, actively, like, putting her boobs away <laughs> from her. It's, like, <laughs> slight changes to it that's really good. It's Kagura on top of, uh, Sadaharu on a horse. <laughs> really good, like, little touches to it, which makes it very fun. <laughs> So it's a good start of this one. So let's go on to the next episode, which is episode 276, which is titled "Calories Come Back to Bite You Just When You're Forgot When Just When You've Forgotten About Them." Go ahead, Zen. Uh, so in this one, I I feel like is the title just called that because of the joke about why he got his fat. Yes, because <laughs> I don't remember it ever coming up again. It comes up a little a bit again, right at the beginning. It's a little bit at the beginning, but then they also have a conversation because he's like, um, Kitoki starts talking about like, oh, I'm gonna eat all these sweets because like this is what a woman eats, and he goes like, No, that has even more calories in it than you think. But it's 100 percent all related to <laughs> this one joke. Again, when Ginto when Gintama wants to talk about a fat woman, nothing will stop them from making one nothing of them. will. Stop. It's it's the uh, clearly the author's like pet joke. It is, is that fat women are really funny. <laughs> the the best payoff of this is in the next episode when uh <laughs> when Zenzo shows up. Because <laughs> I was like, oh wait, yeah, but let's go. Let's, let's start with this one. You're right, one hundred percent. It's just because she yeah. <laughs> she's fat. Yeah, they, they make a joke that, like, oh, what happened was Hijikata, when Hijikata became a woman, all of the mayonnaise calories that he's eaten in his life exploded out <laughs> of him. <laughs> and that's why he's fat now. Um, but yeah, it turns out that the Shinsengumi are on the cult's side, supposedly. Uh, they convince the cult to let them handle the the troublemakers, and then they kind of break off, and they reveal that they are not, in fact... Um, on their side and they're going to work together to try to figure out how to get rid of the cult. Uh, they split off and decide that they need to act really feminine to fit in. And uh, I forget what Hijikata does exactly to try, but it results with Kintoki like kicking him through a store window and saying, women don't act like that. I think it was, wasn't he? It was like, I'm going to buy a buttload of mayonnaise. I don't remember. Well, it was something that he said. He was being like super girly. He was like, Haha, I'm going to go in here and do something. And then uh, Kitoki shatters his face through the window. <laughs> uh, but eventually they're like, they're going to they're going to try to pick up men. Um, Otai and Jubei are, are getting closer and closer to one another. And uh, Jubei is having like second thoughts about trying to stop the cult because he, he's in love with otai and he knows that if he goes back into being a girl they'll no longer be able to be together and they're putting these little devices on the surveillance cameras to stop them from from tracking the their whatever they're doing mm -hmm. uh they eventually decide that they should pretend to be lovers but this pisses off shimpachi and and girl kondo so girl kondo poses with Juve and Shibachi poses with Otai as mm -hmm. fake lovers instead. Yep. Uh, because they, they get really angry at the notion that someone's going to do that with Otai. I, I think, I'm trying to think, I think Kondo's pissed off because of the idea of Otai's doing it. I think Shibachi's pissed off because of the notion that he doesn't get any <laughs> at all. I, like, I'm trying to think of what in my mind would make Shibachi do this. I, I just assume it was protective, protective brotherness. It like could be, it could sister. be that too. I took it into like the incel territory of like, how dare you <laughs> get any before me? <laughs> but fair enough. Uh, Hijikata and Kintoki keep trying to get boys, and it's not really working very well. Uh, and then we find Sukoyo and um, Sachan. Sachan, and they uh, destroy have destroyed all of the various. Uh, surveillance cameras because they're uh, they're like super serious dudes. <laughs> like Sasha's like the the st I don't know what the stereotype is in anime, but it's like the really serious glasses guy. It's like that, that dude like from Bleach. Yeah, it's like uh, Uryu from Bleach. Um, 
and they destroy all the cameras and they uh they're what what is it they say now that we're men we realize how worthless <laughs> the men of the <laughs> district actually are um and they yeah they destroy the cameras and capture the Dakobo cult members and uh so all of the the transformed uh women into men go into the sewers to fight them they're like fighting the cult because they're the men so they're like the action characters now and it's uh it's Kyube, Sukoyo, uh Sachan and um Kagura Kagura on the horse still yeah. still on the horse in the in the sewers and so Hijikata's like, let's all go help, and goes to jump down into the sewer with them. But because uh, she is so fat, she gets stuck in <laughs> the manhole and is unable to go down into the manhole. Scott Steiner's favorite episode. She's fat! <laughs> Every joke. Every single joke is, look how fucking fat Hijikata is <laughs> real quick. Can you believe this pork, <laughs> pork rind currently on the screen? <laughs> Uh, and then again, this is, uh, in fact, the anime saying this, not me, in any kind of shape or fashion. I uh, can't help with that, but putting emphasis on that. How would you feel about this episode, Zen? Uh, it was funny. I really liked when the other women turned men showed up, and they were like, we get to do the the fighting now because we're the boys. Yeah. And uh, the that way was really funny. that was really funny. I like the way that this felt like the most um when Sa- when Zachan shows up and has like the dramatic pose up from up top and uh <laughs> Bachi's like, What is this character uh, this, uh, I find I find it was assassination, but no, he's basically saying like, Who the hell is this guy taking my thing? Because he's the guy he like has glasses and is actually competent at what he does, as opposed to Shimpachi whose thing is he has glasses and is incompetent at a lot of things thought that was funny um the the bit where they're talking about the the calorie stuff was also pretty funny because at some point he talks about like when he's mentioned about how the mayonnaise and his the female body couldn't handle all the mayonnaise that hijikata had eaten over the years and kondo says like no that makes a lot of sense because when i switched to um Despite how I look, I still have my gorilla jeans made it so that my ass my ass hair is still pretty bad (laughs) Yeah, my, my gorilla exploded out or whatever. Yeah, my gorilla exploded out, and he says it very serious. My ass hair is running rampant right now, which is very, very funny. Um, I also like the, the bit there when they show when Sukuyo comes in with all the transformed Yoshiwara dudes now, who were girls and were now dudes, and they're still wearing their old outfits. <laughs> That was very good. Yeah. I, was, I also like when they, I think they mentioned, because like, this isn't fair, because when they gender reverse on them, all that happened to them was that they just look cooler now. <laughs> like, that's the only real difference that they got, that they seem way more confident, and they seem way better than we were when we were men. <laughs> like, the it's it's uh, super funny, especially because all the cameras they took down, when they come back and they're like, eh, don't worry about it, what do you mean? Because like, oh no, they, they, they literally took care of everything. It's like, well, what about the terrorists? They also rounded them up. <laughs> Like, they literally did everything for them off screen while they were, like, pr- busy pretending to be women. Um, I also like when the, the two dudes that they try and pick up are both um, Atose and uh, Catherine as well. But now they're just old old dudes instead. It's funny because when they do the um, the, the ED again, they, they have every character now as their female version. But for the characters that didn't have a specific design, all they did was add a little red bow to them. So Katsura and... Um, and... Holy shit. Well, uh, Elizabeth also has the uh, like female lipstick now. And... Oh yeah, Katsura and um, the other guy. The credit yes. merchant. Yes, I can't... Uh, they both have bows in their hair. <laughs> Yes, they do. They both have little bows in their hair, which is really funny. The one that they don't show is Tama, who Tama, all they, all, all they show for Tama is that the gender hasn't changed, but now she's looking at um, Atose and Catherine and is just frightened about what she sees. Um, yeah, because her, her, her gender doesn't change because she can't get infected with the with the virus. Cause yeah, the exactly. They can't change. I also really like that shot of Yamazaki eating the, the Ampon as a woman with the bags under her eyes. 
Something about it was really funny to me. But yeah, I also liked this episode as it continued on doing things. It was uh, it was very funny. A lot of a lot of pork jokes in this one. A lot of piggy like, "Hey, piggy, how's it going?" And there is a certain volume of it because I know the second that Hijikata was revealed to be fat, I'm like, "There's about to be a fuck ton of fat jokes in this one." Just and that was a hundred percent right. I f- it almost feels like a hundred episodes of no fat jokes since the last fat character was in there all exploded in the span of one and a half episode of, mm-hmm. of, of, of this three episode arc, basically. Um, and I also do like her little. Um, Yukata has like little pigs on it as well. I think her name also means like because Toko is pig. I think yes, it is. Okay, and and is it this? No, it's in the next episode. We'll do it more. But yeah, it was a funny episode. It was the the end of it all here. It was a good one continuing on. I also yeah, was- like when they were specifically speaking about like why men would be more interested in uh, Gintoki versus uh, Hijikata as a female version. And Gintoki's reasoning is, well, my boobs are better and I'm also more perverted than you. So boom, take that. And and thinking about like, oh yeah, because I guess it is technically Gintoki in there. It would be exactly like him and Gintoki is a notorious pervert. So it all makes sense here. <laughs> But all right, let's go on to the last episode of this arc, which is episode 277, which is 10 minus 1. Go ahead, Zen. So, uh the they fight off they're like in the HQ fighting off the cult. They eventually uh fire off the beam to restore everyone back to normal except for the ones that were in the uh in the hq fighting so it's like everybody but our our crew basically um the shinsengumi start their own hostess club or i guess that's what it is they're like strippers they're like police strippers mm-hmm. uh, including kichikata which is <laughs> good um Okita and Sachan create a, a sadist escort group, which is very popular. Um, Sukoyo could, uh, keeps trying to like increase control over prostitutes and keeps trying. Like, at some point, I think she offers to make Gintoki a prostitute if she wants to. <laughs> yeah, because she, she said it's like your bodies are very good. I think they could really be used here. Because like I'm not a prostitute. <laughs> I am not a prostitute. Yeah. Um. Shimpachi and Kagura kind of go their own their own route as Gintoki is gone. Nobody knows where Gintoki is, so Shimpachi and Kagura go their own way. And Kagura rides away on the horse, and is like, "If we're destined to meet again, it will be so." <laughs> and she just rides away on her horse um and Jubei has this ticket and she's gonna go and um with with Otai they're they're going to, on this date and um another fortune teller starts talking to to Jubei and is like you know what? What are you gonna do? Like you're you're conflicted about whether or not you're truly a man or a woman. Um, what what choice are you gonna make in the end that that will make you happy? Or that, that will make you be true to yourself, basically. Um, and she's like standing in the rain, holding this ticket to the date that she's gonna go on with Otai. And eventually, the fortune teller reveals that it's Kintoki the whole time. Um, and they end up going to the next planet that the evil, uh, group is targeting and the planet gets hit by the gender swap beam, but because they all went to that planet with them, they, they got hit by the beam too, which reverted them back to normal. And, uh, with their proper genders, they fight off the, the gender cult and, and defeat them. And it ends with um, them going to the movies and not seeing a romantic movie like they were planning to, but instead a comedy movie that everyone can watch instead. And that's how this arc ends. How do you feel about it, Zen? It was good. Mm -hmm. 
I like the uh I like the um the bit where Gintoki busts out of the smoke and he's he's guy Gintoki again. Gintoki has the best entrances. They're all so good. Every time he arrives, I'm like, yeah, <laughs> Gintoki's here. He is uh, the master at arriving. <laughs> yes, he, he is the goat at, at getting places. Yeah. Um, and I liked the bit where the, the reveal where Kyubei is a girl again. And then does the big... I, I like... She, like, jumps and does a sword slash on this cannon that's way bigger than she is. <laughs> but it it still destroys the cannon. Um, it was good. It was good. I liked it. Yeah. I had a, ni- I had a nice little message here because it, it kind of dialed back around just because they're, they have a conversation here saying specifically it was the reason that um, Kyubei is always so conflicted is that they're never sure if they are female or male. So they can't really fit into column A or column B. There's something in between that always feels wrong. And they'll always keep looking for it. But then he mentioned specifically, because like, it's it's okay to be that way. As long as you are true to yourself, you'll eventually find the proper things and be happy and find people who will also accept you as well. So I thought it was very nice. It was a nice way of going for it, because again... The, the thing that was going in here, which also probably didn't feel right for them, is also that, well, now that they had the masculine body, it still didn't really feel right because they are also still feminine deep down inside. So it's a little bit harder, and it's a much harder path to go on. felt very, uh, for a show that spent a lot of time, in, especially in, uh, in, the, in this entire arc, also just making nonstop <laughs> women fat jokes, it is also funny that they have a kind of like, yeah, this is a little bit more complicated than what we can say, but we can at least say we're going to work together and find out and accept you for what you are because we love you for who you are. Um, and again, for an anime in 2015, that's a pretty nice message overall. <laughs> it could go much worse. Um, and yeah, I also liked a lot of the jokes here. Like, um, Kondo, instead of saying like, cause when they're all, they're all getting used to their new lives and Kondo's like, Oh yeah, I kind of like this new life. I never actually imagined a life of, not being a stalker to Ty and just actually kind of being her friend. <laughs> it actually feels kind of nice. I never actually would have thought of that if I wasn't a woman in this specific instance. I like that bit. I like the bit, of course, when Senzo shows up and is like, oh, yeah, give me Tenko-chan. <laughs> because as was, as was mentioned in previous arc, he's actually super into big women. And so when... <laughs> He sees her, he's like, nah, give me that one. I want her. And she has, like, a look of, like, uh... He's, like, very uncomfortable with the situation, which was pretty funny. Um, there's a bit here, because I realize that it what didn't happen last episode, but in this episode, Sachan says to Gintoki specifically, now that I see you, now that I'm a man, I'm not interested in what, you're, what you got going on now. I can't believe that Gintoki would turn into some kind of sow. <laughs> Yeah, but I can't believe Sakata Gintoki would be the type of person to allow themselves to turn into a sow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then it's actually just a, a, a way for them to say, like, I think you need to go into this sa- this sadist gear that I got for you right here <laughs> instead. Uh-huh. And then uh, Kagura ends up putting, because he's like, I'll pay you extra if you do. And Gintoki goes, I'm not a prostitute. And Kagura puts it on and goes, show me the dog. <laughs> <laughs> And then I also like because Shinpachi makes a mention and it's like, oh my god, they're doing their same bit, but it's way worse now because now Gintoki is the guy is the creepy one. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god, it's so much worse now. Yeah, and I do like that recurring bit of just like I'm not a prostitute. <laughs> and then where do the Shins and Gumi go to work out? And it's like uh, going to be hostesses, and in um, Okita's specific case, an actual <clears throat> an actual courtesan. Which they also mention because like he's a courtesan, but also the only one that can earn so much money without anyone letting anyone touch him at all, <laughs> because it's just full on Seda stuff. Uh, I also like the Sequoia as a dude up top, and all the dudes are now wearing suits. And he's like, "I'm the new Lord of the Night now. <laughs> this is the role that I'm gonna fit for." So that was all very uh, fun. I forgot to mention it, but this was in the last episode because they did a uh, Teach Me Gin- uh, Gipanchi Sensei, but it was with uh, Ginko. And they asked specifically, because you don't see Hasegawa's design as a woman. So he's like, can we please show Hasegawa as a woman? And he's like, you got it. And then they show Hasegawa as a woman. And it's just like a pair of really nice red shoes with the with the note underneath that says, goodbye, cruel world. 
And then when he was like, okay, but we want to see the face now. He's like, you got it. And then they just show a noose hanging and it says, goodbye, cruel world. <laughs> yeah, with a bow on it. <laughs> with a bow on it, which is very funny. <clears throat> so yeah, overall, with this being the end of the arc, I actually really liked it. I thought it was a very nice, uh, funny arc and also cute at the end. Uh, and I was surprised that it wasn't as, uh, you know, on pins and needles going like, I really hope you don't say anything wrong, but I don't, I don't think it does. If it ends up being just, I think, kind of enjoyable for me. Probably a little bit different if you're more into some of the other stuff, but I can't speak to that because I, I'm just a dude. <laughs> so that's my dude opinion. How do you feel, Zen? Uh, yeah, it was, it was good. It was fun. It was cute. Yeah. It was nice because it didn't overstay its welcome. Sometimes yeah. Kentama arcs overstay their welcome. This one did not. Yeah. And they put a lot of effort into, like, this little three-episode thing. Um, and I, again, really do like a lot of the choices they made. What with either being, there being women VA and them, them trying to replicate the male voice actors. Or them just getting male voice actors and saying, I don't know, just kind of putting on a little, like, eh, no, no, no. Just, like, just <laughs> raise your voice just slightly higher. <laughs> Either way, it worked. <clears throat> And now, let's go on to the last episode here, which is episode 278, which is titled All Mothers P All Mothers Pack Too Much Food Into a Lunchbox and Ruin the Shape. Go ahead, Zen. So, yeah, this is the one that's an unrelated standalone episode. Uh, Seita, the kid from... What's that fucking place called? Yoshiwara. Yoshiwara, yeah, the place with the, the courtesan city, mm -hmm. uh, is going to go to school. He's going to get educated, but uh, the his mom puts too much uh, food in his lunches. And so they keep trying to make the he bringing in different female characters to make other lunches with him because they want him to make friends at school. Uh, and he's too embarrassed to eat his lunch around other people. Um, so Sequoia is like there. You make you make lunches that are too too fancy and it, it you know you need to make him something more normal um and so they're like all right well, why don't you do it sukoyo so sukoyo tries and um she makes rice that are shaped like kunai knives but then uh it turns out that they're not shaped like kunai knives they're just our kunai knives covered in rice and so he like bites into it and slices his mouth all up um so then sachan comes to do it but then uh, the lunchbox is, is just rice with i don't know what the little red thing is but it looks like the japanese flag or something i don't it, know what the it's red like thing. a pickled plum okay um and that's all that's in it and there's a note on the top that says like by the way if mom and dad split up which one would you say <laughs> uh oh and, and it says there's lasagna in the fridge heat it up for yourself when you get home mm -hmm. um and everyone's like, "What the fuck? You can't, you can't do that." And she goes, "But that's what mothers do. They think even cold love can be warmed in a microwave." <laughs> um, and so then Cube takes a turn, but then uh, Cube's lunch is like a giant alligator from from um, Toriko. Toriko, yeah. I forgot the name of um, it in, in Toriko, but they call it the Barara Gator in here. Yeah, I remember it being like it's Banana giant... Gator or something. I think it is, yeah. Uh, the giant gator from Toriko to the school. Um, and then Otai. It, it, Otai's turn next, and this time I'm pretty sure there's not even any food. It's just a note that says your father is in the fridge. Don't open it. We can finally be happy. <laughs> uh, and eventually, um, Kagura makes it, and Kagura just eats. Or no, he makes his own food, but Kagura then steals it and is like, your food was shitty. You need to do better. You need to make better food. It needs a little bit of more mayonnaise on the sandwich. Yeah. Um, and so the girl who keeps trying to eat with him, uh, her brother is like, you need to back off because um, you Take keep like fucking around and taking abusing advantage her of her happiness or whatever. Yeah, yeah you're, you're taking advantage of her. Um. So he goes home and uh, it's like, I don't want your fucking lunch, mom, because you always embarrass me and you fuck everything up for me. Um, 
And then he finds out that the girl uh, makes all the lunches because their mom is gone. So she always does it. And so then he comes back to the school with a shitload of lunches for for and he shares them with everyone because he's like uh, my mom made these for me in like a reconciling way and he does a very cool thing where the the mean brother is like i'm not gonna eat his fucking lunch and then he like throws a tempura shrimp using chopsticks into the kid's mouth yeah and he says it's not my lunch it's hers yeah and then uh as a, this nice moment is also ruined because uh um, as everyone looks on and is like, yeah, they get a little bit, um, it turns out that Otai cooked one of them because it has her food in there. Uh, and then the kids actually get in, you hear them yell and then they have like their cute little, like, let's look all lo- Let's look off into the sky together. And then they're also yeah. looking at Otai like, well, you really fucked up. Why did you cook something? <laughs> <laughs> Which is pretty funny. How'd you feel about this one, Zen? It was cute. I know they were trying to be like, don't be mean to your mom, kid, but in my head, I was like, you know, like, he kind of has a point. <laughs> like, yeah, the, I the point too the, with the, what was happening to him. Yeah, he does go through a lot of stuff. It's just that he specifically goes too far when he says, like, you're not even, you're, you're not like a real mom because you're not my Yeah, because you were, you were like a, you were a courtesan, so you don't even know how to be a mom. Yeah. Like, fuck you. Yeah, it's, it's the point because, like, yes, he's gone through a lot of stuff, but also he went too far. So he does have a point of this, like, he probably should have said something sooner, but then he said something he really shouldn't have. <laughs> And that that was the funny thing about it at the beginning, which is why he has so much food at the end, is that um, you think that the reason is is that he's embarrassed. But the actual reason is is that he actually... Because she does give him, like, way too much food, so he doesn't want to bring it out there and, like, feel weird in front of the kids. But at the same time, he's still eating every single one of that food that he can try and eat. <laughs> That's why they... Yeah, he's eating as much of it as he possibly can. Yeah. So it is a little nice, cute at the end. But you're right, he does grow through a lot of shit in this one. <laughs> yeah, the, the kid the kid has to deal with some bullshit in this. Yeah, especially when it gets to the Kagura part, and at that point, it's like, they're just, like, fucking with him. At this point, <laughs> it's like, it really is just like, okay, you maybe are fucking with him just a little bit too hard now, because now he can't even eat his own damn sandwiches in front of anyone. Um, and also, apparently, the name of the gator is the, the Galala Gator. Mm, okay. Or the Garda, Garda, the whatever you know, because Japan doesn't pronounce the L's. They they say right, it as like right. yeah, as ours. As ours, yeah. Correct. But yeah, I thought it was thought it was a very cute episode. It's a very interesting kind of like look into the day life. This is also fun because I don't know too much about. And obviously for us, it's usually lunch boxes is the equivalent. But bentos yeah, aren't really like a bento. Yeah. yeah. Um. Which is true what they say here, which is like, I guess for them, the cute uh, the cute bento eventually disappears once you kind of leave elementary school. Which is true. For the most part, no one really brings... It's good. It's mostly elementary is when kids have lunch boxes. I don't know if they have this anymore, actually. This is back when, back in the 90s, back when I was a child. <laughs> but that's the way it went. It's like, and then when you hit middle school, you didn't really bring an actual lunch box. If anything else, it was like a brown paper bag. And that's where you went. Yeah, like, and you didn't you didn't have like the mom made you cute shit for your for your food, yeah. Yeah, typically not. Um mine would just usually make me a sandwich and then eventually I think I don't know, something weird happened and then you just want to buy lunch from there. I don't know why I did. I would have preferred to have just my mom's cooking, but you know, kids are dumb. <laughs> yeah. And you, I was, you, eventually you're just like, I wanna do what everyone else is doing. The the cool thing that everyone else is doing. Exactly. Not knowing that maybe some of the, which is I think the point they were trying to also make here, which is that you don't know what those kids' situations are. It's like it's not like they're doing this because of this. It's because literally, oh, we don't even have a mom in this specific instance. We I make them myself and stuff like that. Right. Yeah. So I also I thought it was very cute. I like the little I like the bit there where they they clearly lose um, the plot. Which is when Sachan comes in and starts brings in introduces the note about the family situation. And yeah, then, <laughs> and it just keeps spiraling out of control. Yeah, and then and then the next one, the next the, the next list is like I patched things up with your dad. Everything's gonna be okay. And then when it gets to the final note, it was like he's <laughs> your father's in the fridge. 
Yeah, it's, your father's dead. We, we can, can finally be happy. be happy together. And then they go like, there wasn't any any real food in that one. It was just a note because like I don't I don't know about this food stuff. I was interested in the note personally. <laughs> I was <laughs> I was interested in the family situation of the story. Yeah, like, I was interested building, in the drama. Yeah, which is funny. Um. I also just like in general whenever all the women join forces to be like we're gonna do this extremely normal woman thing and they all fail at it to a certain extent <laughs> because they're not regular women. Uh, but yeah, I really liked the obviously the Toriko reference. It was it was weird to see it as like oh yeah, capture level eight. They even say like uh, no, capture level one requires ten samurais armed with real swords to take down. Like they even go far that far into the Toriko like. Um, capture. Yeah, I think they even show Seita as Komatsu. Yes, they do at one point, which is which was like uh, funny. Um, I also like when the, he's pretending to study. He has Shonen Jump, and I realized that what he's reading is called Maruto. Uh, M A R U T A, which is clearly just uh, Naruto, but with an M in front of it. Legally, distinctly different. Zen. No one will ever know the difference. <laughs> So yeah, very cute episode. And that will end this batch of episodes for Shonen Archive. Very simple to talk about when we don't do like five, six, seven of them at a time. Then. Yeah, <laughs> when we don't go insane with the the big arcs. Yeah. Exactly. And speaking of big arcs, at the end of this one, oh, I forgot to mention, there's also a new OP and ED as well. Oh, oh yeah, see. there was for the last And they also make a reference to it in the previous episode. Because in the in the preview bit, when it, like the text talks to you as mm-hmm. it's showing the the bits, it goes, "Will there be a new OP and ED next episode?" And then in parentheses it says, "We're working on it." <laughs> That's funny. And yeah, there is one one that seems to have um, references up until the uh, the next arc that we're about to go into, and then the ED shows. Um... Those fucking twins that we haven't seen in a really long ass time. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. The the An- Ane and Mone who have not shown up in a long fucking time. Like I I'm trying to remember the last time we saw them and it was a very long time ago. So I don't know if that means that they're gonna be coming up or maybe it was just a way for them to be like, oh no, we're just gonna show these two real quick. We'll see. Credit merchant. Exactly. More, more credits merchants. <laughs> Need to earn that dose in. Yeah. Everyone show me the dosh. Exactly. Everyone else has theirs. Why not them? They all need it to. They can't all have be given to just the two. The regular characters <laughs> needs to be given out to everyone. Um. So yeah, that's that. The, the, let me say what's going to be coming up next week. Potentially, I say next week, but it's not going to be next week because next week me and Zen have a live stream planned for Mischief Night or Devil's Night, depending on where you come from. But either way, it's a, it's going to be October thirtieth, so it will be a stream where me and Zen. We'll be watching uh, horror, uh, public domain horror movies. Uh, I haven't decided which one. And then also uh, Scooby-Doo, Blair Witch, or as they call it, I think the, that. the Do Project, I think is what it's called, which is a Blair Witch um, Scooby-Doo parody that was made sometime either late 90s or early 2000s that actually legitimately aired on the Cartoon Network. That's amazing. It is. So I'll be, we'll be doing that on Twitch, that. and you can see it there. I could probably look into seeing if I could also put it up on YouTube, because that would really help on um, the uploading of it, huh? If I just had a stream and I just said, hey, here we go, here's what we're going to be doing. Yeah, probably. Mm, I'm going to look into this for later. I'm going to see. I'm going to see, because I'm also going away to Vegas <laughs> in tomorrow. By the time you hear this, I will already be in Vegas, because these release on Saturdays. Uh, I'll be in Vegas already at MagicCon playing Magic the Gathering and doing, doing other stuff in Vegas when I find Hell time. yeah. Yes, I'm pr- I'm ready. I'm glad to be on vacation because as I was leaving, work got really crazy busy and I said, good luck with that and said, peace out. <laughs> I'll see you guys later. <laughs> see ya. <laughs> yeah, see you that's later. the best kind of vacation. It is. Unless you're at the type of workplace where they're like, you know what, let's hold on to all this till he gets back. Oh, yeah, there's no way to do it because these companies want it now. <laughs> there's no ah, way they could. good. Got them. Yeah, got them perfectly. So, likely two weeks from now, we'll talk about, hopefully, episodes 282. Nope. 280. 279 to 282. 
which will feature the Shinigami arc, which is episodes 279 to 281, and then a bonus extra episode, which is going to be episode 282, because then we'll be going into some other little tiny things that we have to talk about as well. There's also one other specific arc that I have to look for and see when we would need to be doing it. But I'll get back to you on that in like two weeks' time. I'm already kind of uh, half <laughs> sold out for the week coming up, but I still was able to say at least this much. I'm pretty sure those are the four episodes that we got next. Got it. So, all right. Uh, it's time to wrap up the show. So it's time for me to say, if you want to support the show, as always, you can leave a like, comment, watch it, or watch in general. It's always nice. If you want to see more Zen, you can go over to Zen's channel, uh, where he does Shonen and Chill and all his all wrestling and chill. What's going on on your side for, for this week and for the foreseeable weeks, I guess, while I'm gone? <laughs> uh, not a ton. I mean, everything is pretty, pretty laid back. We're, uh, wrestling is in a, in a weird place right now. We're just waiting for Saudi Arabia to be gone. Yeah. Um, <laughs> weird out of context, but that's correct. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you know you know if you know you know exactly uh yeah we're pulling a cm punk here so. <laughs> yes uh 100 yeah, percent. <laughs> and if you want to see more zen during the spooky season you can go over to my channel where you can watch me and zen watch a bunch of commercials with my brother occasionally piping up in the background as well to make some mentions of it too that was a really fun video <laughs> yes it was it was, a t it was a load of fun, and I look forward to doing it now. You know what we should do? It we should do it again for Christmas. See if we can find. We some... should we should do it for literally every holiday. All right, thanks, Christmas, Sammy. We're gonna Easter, do it for Valentine's Day. We're, we're doing it again for Thanksgiving. Okay, so we're, we're, yeah, we're just gonna keep on rotation on every the holiday. Every yeah. holiday, we're just gonna keep doing it again because I I did have a ton of fun going back to it. Um, and I think, weirdly enough, I don't know, probably because of the holiday season buff, we are on some kind of weird algorithm with more people came in to watch it just for a bit for that one. So well, I was like, yeah, the holiday buff. Yeah. Love that. So I was like, neat. I don't know why out of everything it was this one, but you know what? Sometimes people just want to watch old stuff together and be like, yeah, this is cool. And we agree. That's why we see it. Um <clears throat> And let's see. And then, obviously, if you want some more me stuff, you can go to the channel where if you all... <laughs> where I will be doing, as always, for Go videos and uh, Halloween, 13 Nights of Halloween is going on. I should hopefully be able to get all 13. I won't be having... I'll probably have exactly 13 guests, but they won't be in every single one of the video. It's really weird. It's a really weird year today because it's been a hell of a month for me to try to plan everything and get everything ready before I go away. And then still planning for stuff to come back. Like, I will be going on vacation, and then on the Monday that I return, I will have already set up more recordings to do 13 nights and <laughs> It's always a busy month this time of year, but I look forward to it. And it's a great time if you just want to see more videos of me and ge doing generally anything. There's never been a better time. If you like Fago videos, those are still going to be there. And if you don't like Fago videos, congratulations. These videos are far away from the Fago ones, and you can just check them out and not have to worry about them. And also, while I'm gone, my brother will also be uploading videos as well to my channel. Um, nice. Yeah, doing stuff because I asked the, him. Keep the flow moving. Yeah, exactly. As I told him, um, you need to occasionally release for Go videos or the algorithm will get mad at me. So <laughs> in order to keep the, the beast happy, some have to go up. And so I've told him, whatever you want to do, release it. I didn't even tell him specifically for Go, but he figured, yeah, for Go. And then he has something else planned, I think. So look forward to that. It will already be up by the time you hear this, but I'll have no idea what he's done until I come back from vacation. <laughs> So that will be fun. And yep, yeah, that's about it. That wraps it up for Shonen Archive this week. Thank you very much for watching. We will see you guys hopefully in two weeks' time. So, until next time, say goodbye, Zen. See you later, everybody.